All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, today we have a very fun review to start and a very fun build for us to start. Uh, this is the brand new model kit of the USS Voyager uh, made by Polar Lights. Um, so a, a very exciting model kit. Now, the Voyager has not had a new model kit release in decades. Um, way back in the 90s, Monogram originally had the license for the Voyager TV show. They made a good-sized Voyager uh, that was about 1 677th scale. They also made a three-piece set with, I believe, the Voyager, uh, the Marquis ship, and a Kazon radar that was roughly around 1 1400th scale. Now this, 1 1000th scale, uh, should be right in the middle of those two kits, uh, but this is an all-new tooling. Uh, it should have much better fit than those kits from the 90s, and it should be in scale with some of the other model kits that have been put out recently. So if you're looking for a display where you can have a lot of the hero ships together and in the same scale, 1 1,000th is the way to go. And of course, the USS Voyager is a ship that is supposed to be lit up. I, I think if you look at the screenshots from the show, I think all the windows on the Voyager are always lit. It's got the wonderful nacelles, the deflector dish, and tons of windows. Uh, so it's made to be lit, and Polar Lights has actually put out a clear edition of the USS Voyager. Uh, so we have a clear edition here. We're going to take a look at that, and that should make lighting it very, very easy. Now let's take a look at the box art. Uh, the Voyager is a wonderfully good-looking ship, uh, very nicely designed. And what's kind of fun about the Voyager is by the time they designed the Voyager, they had most of the Star Trek technology sorted out. So they knew they needed tractor beams. They knew they needed deflector dishes. Uh, they had a good idea of what cabins they would need and what sets they would need. So they really, when they were designing this ship, um, really put a lot of thought into making it a good practical ship. So when the writers would need to use a deflector dish, there would be one on the model. When they needed rear photon torpedo launchers, they would already be on the model. Uh, it's just absolutely wonderfully thought out. Now this is going to be 13 and a half inches long. Uh, it has 58 parts, which is a pretty high part count for a Star Trek ship. Um, and a complete decal placement guide. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the box art is just gorgeous. Of course, uh, it's part of the Voyager series, so it does have Janeway up on top. And a nice quote from Captain Janeway from uh, the end of the two-hour pilot right here on the box. All right, let's open one of these up and see what's inside. All right, uh, first thing we have is our decal sheet and very extensive. So, of course, we have the registries and the pennants. Uh, we have the big names and number for the front. Um, all of these are kind of the warning stripes to go around the different phaser banks. Lots of lifeboats to put on the ship and lots of decals for the windows. Now, the windows don't have uh, pictures of scenes of anything in there, but it just has kind of dark windows and light windows. So... Very nicely done there. Uh, I wonder, it looks like they have matching sets of the white and the black. So you can choose whether you do your windows either in white or in black, or you could mix and match them. But it looks like there's enough windows for you to really choose uh, whether you want them done in black or not. Uh, then we have all of, I believe these are tractor emitters. Uh, we have the landing pad for the shuttle bay. Uh, you actually have a decal for the shuttle bay door and windows itself. Tons of little markings on it. And then um, the sensor pallets. So you have decals for the sensor pallets along the rim of the ship. Um, on the old bigger kits, you would pick those out with like a little toothpick to put in all the color. Here you'll be able to just decal them. 
and lots and lots of little hatches. Very finely done here. Um, so lots of decals to add detail to the ship. Now, many times when I do these reviews, we look at the box and you see the full paint guides done in nice color uh, on all the sides. But usually you also see the decal callouts. And you'll notice we do not have decal callouts on the side of the box. We do have a paint guide uh, to kind of give you a few names and no names and numbers of paints. Uh, so they really do call out this time a couple paint numbers. Um, IJA Gray, Concrete, uh, Deckhouse Blue. So if you really want to get some precise colors, they do call them out on the box for you. And then they give you really nice big color shots of it. Um, so you get an idea of how it should look once it's painted. So the decal placement guide for this kit is actually done on paper uh, because it, <laughs> the decals are fairly more extensive than on a lot of their other kits. Uh, so you can see you get a very big set of the instructions dedicated to the decals and their placement. And with this number of decals, this should be a lot easier than having to look around the sides of the box to figure out where they go. Now, looking at the actual plastic, we're gonna look at the colored version first, um, just because you'll be able to see more detail on it since it is opaque. Uh, but the we're gonna look at the clear ship in just a moment. Uh, so first, you have a top and a bottom of the saucer. The engineering hull is done in three main pieces. Now, different from the big kit you might remember from the 90s, the bottom is done in one piece. Um, the previous version had a big seam right down the middle that would be fairly hard to work on and still keep all these nice shapes and details that are supposed to run across the bottom of the ship. So you have um, a really big section here, should make it very easy to light. This back deck is once again done in two pieces uh, so that you can squeeze some wires in it. But let's clip this out and see how big the ship is gonna be. Now we know it's 13 inches, uh, but let's hold it up against some of the ships we know uh, so we can get an idea of kind of how much heft it'll be and how it'll look on your shelf. Now for comparisons, I have course, one of the last one of the Southern Scale models I did, the USS Defiant. So you see the Voyager is going to dwarf it. But still, you know, you got the hero ship from Deep Space Nine, the hero ship from Voyager. They'll look good together. Here's another ship most people have, uh, the Constitution Refit from the classic Star Trek movies. And as you can see, uh, Voyager will look good beside it, but Voyager clearly dwarfs the ship in size. Um, really, it's only going to be about an inch bigger, maybe two inches bigger, uh, but just a lot more heft. Um, you can really see kind of side by side, a much, much bigger saucer section a much bigger um, engineering hull, much bigger windows, but still a lot of things like the bridge are in scale with each other. So these are gonna look good together. Let's get some good looks at the molding. So you can see raised panels uh, where you'll be putting all the lifeboats. You can see recessed for all the windows. Um, these are control thrusters, nicely molded. And if you want to see some good molding in detail, take a look at these phaser stripes. Uh, some very nice detail in those. Uh, that'll be really nice to, to be able to paint those and then maybe do a wash uh, to kind of bring out all that tiny detail on those. There's a good look at the sensor palette. So obviously you can still just use a toothpick and pick all those out and put paint on all those, or you can lay the decal on it and use a good amount of microsol to really melt the decal to it, um, to do it that way. 
Uh, you can see on these bigger windows, um, they are really just shapes. They're not openings. Uh, so that's where you'll use those decals. Looks like you will have some clear parts here. I believe, um, I believe this is going to be the mess hall and possibly Janeway's office, although Jane's, Janeway's ready room might be up here. I think ready room, conference room, mess hall. So I guess I'm not sure what room this one is here. Now the engineering hall, uh, once again, we already kind of saw that there's a lot of nice detail along the bottom of the ship. Um, on the top, we're gonna have that top section for the landing pad back here, but then you're going to have kind of one piece coming up like this and one piece like this uh, to finish off the top. Here is kind of the first one to look at. And you can see nicely molded windows. Uh, you can see the sensor pallets. And most of the seam will be hidden by where it joins the saucer. Here is kind of the part for the other side. Uh, so you will end up with a bit of a seam, but that will mostly be covered uh, by this piece going all the way down. On this back deck, you can see another sensor pallet. Uh, looks like the rear torpedo launchers are going to be separate pieces. Here's the top part of that landing deck. And then the deflector dish and housing. So you'll have a clear part back here. And this is a new part. I used to be able to get these aftermarket, but now they'll be included in the kit. These are the landing legs for Voyager when it lands on a planet. And then up here, these are the hinges. Uh, so you can actually move your nacelle pylons up and down. Here are the warp nacelles. So engraved panel lines. Uh, there is the door for the shuttle bay, uh, the little deflector dish that goes on the saucer. Now here's something that they didn't really do even in the biggest size of the Voyager. Uh, you have openings for these impulse engines. So those are cut open. There is a clear part for those for the front and for the back. So if you want to light those up, that will be very, very easy. Let's see if you can kind of see down there that those are open uh, right here. And if you ever had the old kit, it was actually a fairly big pain uh, to get the clear parts to fit in right here on the nacelle. You can see this time the clear parts actually will have a peg for them to fit onto. So it should be very easy to get those into place. And of course, on the standard edition of the ship, you have a clear parts sprue. So you can see nice lines of detail on the deflector housing. Uh, these are the clear parts that go in front of the warp nacelles. And you can kind of see the hole there to help mount it on and hold it in place. Uh, this one, that must be for the underside of the saucer. Um, these are the windows for the front part of the saucer. And I'm gonna have to get into the instructions to see what some of these are. Obviously these are the grills for the warp nacelles, uh, but then some of these smaller ones, I think these are the parts that will fit in on the impulse engines. So I think the bigger one will fit in right under this. I think the smaller one will fit behind this part. And then I'll have to look up what some of the ones over on this side are. All right, now let's take a look at the clear edition of the USS Voyager. So once again, this is the kit that is made to be lit. Now, of course, it has the same clear parts sprue um, for all the parts that have to be kind of brightly lit. But then the rest of the ship is done in this. Now, I suppose it's not quite clear more a translucent. You can see here um, very much a white translucent plastic, more like what you'd find on a milk jug rather than something that is crystal clear like the clear parts. Were. So you can kind of see there uh, the kind of difference in the clear plastics. Now that's got to be nice because this should be a lot less brittle uh, than actual clear plastic. Um, but 
it'll do the same thing where if you put a light behind it, you'll be able to see that light through. Now, the idea behind this is you're going to put some big pieces of tape behind all the windows you want lit up. Then you're going to spray the inside white and black and silver, whatever colors you want to block the light. Then you're going to pull those off. Then on the outside, you're going to spray it probably black again to block out of the light. Then you can use a little pick to scrape all the paint off of the windows or anything else you want to be lit. Um, and then once you put a light behind it, um, you'll be able to see uh, those lit up windows where you've scraped away the paint. Now, I think kind of a cool idea here is you could also make kind of glowing battle damage if you want to. You could put um, kind of a phaser burn in part of it and light it up kind of red from underneath to show the ship kind of glowing with damage. Um, you could do some cool things with the phaser stripe, um, kind of leaving it unlight blocked and kind of make a bright gold glow right here as if the phaser is firing. So there's a lot of neat things you can do uh, with a clear or a translucent ship. So all of these little windows, uh, you could kind of mask off the windows uh, while you do the light blocking, then remove it to kind of reveal all those windows and make them be lit. Especially up here, uh, where all these little windows uh, for the conference room and Janeway's ready room, so you can get those lit up. Here's that translucent plastic uh, for the warp nacelles. And once again, you know, it'll help you light some of these smaller things. So you can see here, I hope you can see, um, there is a tiny little uh, raised bump there uh, for one of the navigation beacons. And that's something where you can light block the entire thing, then uh, kind of sand a little bit of paint off of that navigation beacon to have that light up. So if all you want to light up is the deflector dish and the warp nacelles, um, you can really get either addition you want. But if you want to be able to light up all of these little windows that are in the ship, uh, really get this clear addition uh, and just make it easy on yourself and just light block it and then scrape the paint off the windows you want to have lit. You can also put black paint behind some of them so that it looks like a dark room underneath it. All right, uh, these parts, it actually looks like those are the photon torpedo launchers. So that'll be easy to make your photon torpedo launchers um, glow red as well. Now I'm actually really happy with this being more of a translucent rather than clear, because now I'm a lot less afraid to work on it. Clear plastic really can be brittle um, and it can have some other problems too. So a translucent plastic that will still be very easy to light up and scrape off those windows uh, is a really nice compromise. Um, will be very easy to work with and very easy to light. All right, so that's kind of our unboxing of the USS Voyager. And, you know, it's going to be a really great looking display piece. This is going to be a really nice size for a Star Trek ship. Um, again, this size where you can paint it or decal it. You can do a lot of things with it. You won't, you're not going to be lacking for room to put your lights in. Uh, so really a size where you'll be able to do lots of different things on it. So we're gonna have a couple different ways we go about this. Um, I'm really thinking I'm just gonna build and paint the standard edition without any lights. That way I could do a build pretty quickly and get some real good size comparisons for us. And of course, there's no way we're not gonna light the clear edition. So we'll put LEDs in there, we'll do the light blocking, we'll scrape the paint off all the windows and get a gorgeously lit Voyager model. So stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be doing both these builds over the next two weeks. And once again, guys, thanks for following the channel. Thanks for following allscaletrek.com forums. And thank you for following us on our Facebook page.